All right, so we're up to, we're still looking at the Gospels. We're going to do one more week on the Gospels. So remember 40, 41, 42, 43 are the Gospels. So today we're going to look at the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let's put, take that off your head. Let's not muck around. Now let's pay attention. Okay, I've got some pictures for you guys to see. Good morning. This is a picture of, that somebody drew of Jesus at the Last Supper with his disciples. See you know what the Last Supper was? This is the last dinner that Jesus had with his closest 12 disciples. And he's, uh, this is where, at the Last Supper, this is where we learned to break bread. You know, sometimes as, as church, we break bread together and we partake of the cup. At the Last Supper is when Jesus started that ordinance for us to remember his death, his broken body, and his shed blood. So he was doing that with his disciples at the Last Supper and asking them, hey, do this in remembrance of me. Now, after they ate, do you know what happened? Jesus got up from the table and he went to go wash his disciples' feet. Isn't that amazing that the God of the universe in flesh would wash your feet? Isn't the feet pretty stinky? Have you ever smelled your feet before? Some people chew their toenails Ooh, yucky <laughs> but you know Sarah don't, don't point please but you know what Jesus to show how he was humble and that he served his disciples he got off he got a basin of water Shh, no talking please no talking please got a basin of water and he washed his disciples feet you know what happened when he got to Simon Peter Simon Peter said to Jesus, Lord, you, you never wash my feet. Why? Because he recognized who Jesus was. But you know what Jesus said to him? He said, if I wash thee not, you'll have no part with me. So you know what Peter said then? He says, don't wash my feet only, but also my hands and my head. He wants the whole body to be washed. So that's the attitude we want to have. If Jesus wants us to do something, we say, hey, do it all. Right? Rather than saying, oh, we, we, don't, we can never tell Jesus you're wrong. Right? So it's like Simon Peter, he's like saying Jesus is wrong for washing his feet. You can never correct Jesus because Jesus is God. He knows what's right. So he washed his feet. After he washed their feet, they sat back down. Jesus was really troubled. You know what he said? This is John 13, 21. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in the spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. So it's at the Last Supper where Jesus says to his disciples, one of you here is going to betray me. And you know what all the disciples said? They said to each other, they said, who's going to betray Jesus? They asked Jesus, is it going to be me? Because they weren't sure of the 12. Who would betray? Who would betray Jesus of the 12 when they've been working and serving with him for 12 years? Jesus says, you know what? I'm going to dip some bread into the dip. And the one that I give it to, that's who's going to betray me. And do you know who he gave it to? Who remembers? Simon. Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot. And Jesus dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas. And even though he told, his, he told some of his disciples, I'm going to dip bread and the person I give it to is going to betray me, even after he gave it to Judas Iscariot, you know what the disciples were thinking? Oh, Judas, when he left... He's not going to go betray Jesus. They thought, well, he's just going to go do something with the money. Like maybe he's going to go give some money to the poor. He's got something, an errand to run. Because they couldn't believe that one of the 12 was going to be one of the people that was going to betray Jesus. So he went to betray Jesus. And then after they ate, they went out to the Garden of Gethsemane. And Judas came and betrayed Jesus with a kiss. He said, whomsoever I kiss... That's who Jesus is. So he kisses Jesus. So when they come to arrest him with guards in the garden, Jesus asks them, Who are you after? Whom seek ye? And they say, Jesus of Nazareth. And you know when Jesus says, I am he, you know what happened? They all fell back. <laughs> Whoa! Because just the power of Jesus saying, I am he, made them fall back onto the ground. So he says, let the people, get, let my disciples go and you can take me. So Jesus is then taken to an illegal council, an illegal trial at night with the high priests where they ask him, 
You know, who do you say you are? People are saying that you're the Son of God and you're the Son of the Most High. Who are you? And at this trial, Jesus eventually openly says to them, you're right. And in Mark 14, 62, look at what Jesus says to them. Jesus said, I am, and ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. This is when he says to them, you know what? I am the Son of God. And you know what? How they reacted? You know how they responded? You think they were happy about that? No, they said blasphemy. How can somebody as a man claim to be the Son of God, making himself equal with God? So they were angry that Jesus, you know, some of them hit him on the face. And this is what's happening illegally, right? At night time, they're having this trial. So then Jesus is taken away by the Jews to Pontius Pilate because now that they've said that he's committed blasphemy, they want Jesus dead. But they can't kill Jesus themselves because they're not in authority. So they take Jesus over to Pontius Pilate to hopefully convince Pontius Pilate to kill Jesus. So Jesus stands before Pontius Pilate and Pontius Pilate questions him and asks him things to find out what did this man do wrong that all these people want to kill him. So he brings them out to the people and says in John 19, 4, Look, Pilate therefore went forth again right, to the people and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you that ye may know that I find no fault in him. What is he saying? I'm bringing Jesus out to you to show you I don't see that he's done anything wrong. Why? Right? Because Jesus was sinless. He didn't do anything wrong. And you know how the Jews responded? They just said they want him crucified. Crucify him, right? Because they didn't want him as their king. And this is what happened. So then Pilate, Pontius Pilate, in order to satisfy the people, even though he found nothing wrong with Jesus, had Jesus whipped and beaten and crucified. So they whipped him. You can see the Roman soldiers here whipping him, beat him. And then they put a crown of thorns on his head in mockery of him being the king. A crown of thorns on his head. You know what thorns are? They're like really sharp into his skull. And they made him carry a cross all the way to the hill of Golgotha in order to be crucified. And when they got to... Golgotha, this is the picture I always show you guys. This is what happened. They put Jesus on a cross where he was left to die. And he was crucified between two thieves. You remember? Because the scripture said he was numbered with the transgressors. One of the thieves ended up getting saved and the other didn't. Now in Mark 15, 39... When they crucified him, it says, And when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he had so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. So those that crucified him after Jesus died, a lot of miracles happened at that moment. And one of the centurions confessed that, Man, we just crucified the Son of God. Now after Jesus died, after he gave up the ghost, they took his body down from the cross they wrapped it up, put it into a tomb as Joseph of Arimathea had prepared and they thought that was the end. They thought that their leader had, had died. But was that the end? No, when, once Jesus' body was buried, while everyone was resting, right? there was Sabbath, his soul descended into hell for three days and three nights in order to pay for our sins. But what happened three days later? Who knows what happened three days later? Matea. He rose again from the dead. The ladies came early on Sunday morning to see whether what, was happened, what happened with the body. And when they came, the stone was rolled away and they saw angels sitting around the tomb telling him what? It says, He saith unto them, this is Mark 16, 6. He saith unto them, Be not affrighted, Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. 
He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they lay him. All right, so let's read this one together because this is the verse we're going to do a craft about today in Mark 16, 6. You ready? Mark chapter 16, verse 6. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. And even Mary Magdalene had an encounter with Jesus after he rose again from the dead. He appeared to his disciples. First to Mary Magdalene. And then to his other disciples. They couldn't believe that he had risen from the dead. And you remember last week we talked about doubting Thomas, didn't he? Because he, Thomas wasn't there when the, he first appeared to his disciples. And Thomas said, hey, unless I see the print in his hands or the hole in his side, I won't believe. And Jesus said, be not faithless, but believing. And then at the day of Pentecost, that's when Jesus ascended back up to heaven. Now Jesus left us with a mission when he ascended up to heaven. What was it? In Mark 16, 15, he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So that's what we are tasked to do on this earth. The last thing that Jesus said to his disciples is go and preach the good news. The good news that Jesus had died, was buried and rose again for our sins. That's what he wants us to go and preach. So that's our mission on earth while we're here. I hope you learned a little something more about Jesus this morning. We're going to have, we have a craft prepared for you guys. So I'll just get Elizabeth to bring up what we're going to do today. <laughs> just wait, Theone, not yet. Just sit down. I'll just show you first what we're doing and then we'll go to the back. Getting a bit ahead of me. So today we've got a little craft where we're going to make the empty tomb. Okay, so if you remember this picture, the tomb was empty. They came and found it empty. And then they, so we have the three crosses of the two thieves, one with Jesus. So we're going to put this together. You guys can decorate it from a bit. And this is the stone. Remember that was rolled away. And we look for Jesus inside. No, he's gone. Why? Because he's risen again from the dead. He is risen. He is not here. Mark 16, 6. Okay, so we're going to make this today. So let's all stand up. We'll go to the back of the room and we can all make one of these.